Welcome. This episode is a real-world example of dealing with deep in the money covered calls. If you're new to covered calls, this is a situation you need to understand. It happens when the stock price of one of your covered calls shoots way above your strike price. You'll need to know what choices you can make depending on your circumstances. Your covered calls will occasionally go against you. By going against you, I mean you sell the call and then the stock price shoots up way past your strike price. This can happen very quickly before you decide to take action. But it's not the end of the world. You have choices and can still make a nice profit. It doesn't feel great to miss out on all this stock price appreciation, but it's a good problem to have. Sometimes the best way to understand something is with a real-world example. So we'll be doing a post-mortem analysis of my covered call adventure with Pulte Homes, PHM. This is my second episode about my covered calls on PHM, a home builder. The image you're seeing is the other one from several months ago and is linked in the description. Check it out. I've recently closed out my PHM covered calls and sold my PHM stock. In this episode, we'll go over most of my 20-ish transactions. They were from May 2022 through November 2023. You're looking at the transactions in a spreadsheet, but don't worry, we won't try to understand them here. It's much easier to see what's going on by looking at the transactions on an annotated stock chart. Here's a chart of PHM over that time without the annotations. We'll compute some metrics to measure returns on my time holding and selling calls against PHM. Then we'll compare those returns to just owning the stock without the covered calls, which will make me sad. Then I'll cheer up by reminding myself I still made a nice return. Finally, I'll do some post-mortem armchair quarterbacking on what I could have done differently. Deep in the money covered calls can make you feel stupid because you're missing out on big gains, but you're still making money, just less of it. It's the price you pay for collecting all that premium from the rest of your covered calls. If this is sounding interesting so far, please consider liking and subscribing. Now let's take a closer look at this annotated chart. All my transactions are shown. I originally got interested in Pulte because it looked cheap and had a very good balance sheet, very little debt compared to the other home builders. So I sold some aggressive puts at a strike just a little below its price back in May of 2022. A 45 strike right here. I collected 340 premium for those two puts and was feeling good about it. Then PHM took a brief but violent move down and I got assigned. I figured the home builders would have some rough sledding for a while until interest rates started falling again and was planning on building out my PHM position over time. Things were going as expected for the first seven months. Nothing much happened with PHM from May until January 2023. After getting assigned in June, I rolled a few times to collect some extra premium. Nothing too interesting about these rolls. See my episode about rolling linked in the description. I did not anticipate what happened next. Mortgage rates continued to rise, encouraging existing homeowners to stay in their homes, which were financed at much lower rates. No one was selling their homes. This effectively killed the used home market. New homes were the only game in town for buyers, and the home builders could offer some rate incentives over trying to finance the few used homes on the market. The demand was high for these new homes, and still is as of this recording, because of the shortage of used homes. This had a big effect on PHM stock. When this effect first started, I had rolled up and out to a 50 strike leap covered call to try and capture some more of the stock price appreciation. That is this right here, and here is my strike, the red line. It quickly shot far past my strike price. I looked at rolling it out and up again a few times, but PHM leap options aren't that liquid, so I thought I'd have trouble getting another leap roll filled. 
I decided to just wait as I described in my previous PHM video, linked in the description. PHM would either come back close to my strike and give me another opportunity to roll, but this did not happen. Or it would eventually get so high that the option would lose almost all of its time value, which would let me close out the option and sell the stock without paying much time value, which is what happened. I closed out my PHM position November 17th, a couple months before it expired, for a nice gain, but much less of a gain than if I would have just bought and held the stock over that time. So let's compute some metrics to see how these calls did and compare them to just buying and holding the stock. We'll see how much I made versus how much I could have made. If you total up all my transactions in this column, I ended up making a profit of 2,436 bucks on a $9,000 investment over about 19 months. This works out to an annualized yield of 18.33%. Not too shabby, similar to the return of the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ over this time. You can check out my Options Annualized Yield episode for details on how to compute this number. It's linked in the description. However, if I would have just bought and held PHM stock over this time, I would have made an amazing 64.6% .6 annualized. I may have sold at some point and not realized all this gain, but who knows. This was in a taxable account, so I probably would have held for at least a year to get the long-term tax rate. So what made me close out the expensive covered call and sell my shares, rather than just waiting for it all to get called away in January? There's a couple reasons. First, my crypto broker, Voyager, went out of business. I took some crypto losses this year, and I, I wanted to realize some gains against those losses. So I needed to close my PHM positions before January 1st to realize the gains for tax reasons. Second, the time value had decayed quite a bit. There was very little chance this option would finish out of the money. All the drama was gone, so the call options were selling very close to their intrinsic value. See my first episode on PHM, linked in the description for how to compute time value and intrinsic value for options. I wasn't going to gain much by holding to expiration, and I wanted to deploy the capital elsewhere rather than it just sitting there for a couple more months and earning a very small amount of time decay money. At the time I closed, its time value was down to $67. This would have worked out to about 3.9% annualized yield on the current collateral, which is less than a short-term CD or treasury. There was also another $32 in dividends I could have collected before the first of the year. You can see the dividends here on this chart, these little Ds. PHM's next X dividend date is December 18th, so maybe I should have waited until after that. The call holder may have executed it before then to get the dividend, which would have resulted in me paying no time value. This is kind of a minor detail for a small fish like me. I believe the market does a pretty good job of pricing in dividends to call option prices, so I don't worry about it too much. So what could I have done differently? Do I have regrets? Yes, a little bit. I wish I hadn't been so quick to roll down here and here. And when rolling out to the leap call here, I wish I would have collected less premium and gone to a higher strike. In other words, I wish I would have been less aggressive with my calls. I think I was chasing premium a little too much. Also, once the leap call was in place, I did have a couple opportunities to roll up and out in early January, right there, and then maybe here in March, but I chose not to. I'm still very surprised by the violent move up of PHM during 2023. Wasn't expecting a home builder to double. But in hindsight, as explained earlier, it makes sense with very few used homes available to new buyers. 
That's a wrap on my PHM Adventures. I think it's a good company, and if it falls in the future, I may consider getting back into PHM by selling puts and calls. Please let me know what you think of this content, what you would have done differently. I really appreciate any feedback and comments. If you enjoyed the content, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm not a financial advisor. This wasn't financial advice. I was just sharing my deep in the money covered call experience with Pulte Homes and have a profitable day.